Welcome back to Heath Rouse Barbecue. On today's episode of Shooting the Q, we're gonna be cooking a classic three, two, one ribs. That's right. I've got a full slab of spare ribs here from Cheshire Farms, and we're gonna show you the old school way today. Let's get started. The first step is going ahead and firing our grill up to 225 degrees. We've got our Traeger Timberline running at 225 with some Royal Oak pellets. We've cut our slab of spare ribs out of the pack and you can see that they've got a little bit of fat up here on the end and you want to take that off. But the first thing I want to do is turn it over. Now down here, this flap meat on the end, I would cut that off because it's kind of loose. And so I'm going to go right to that bone right here. Now any of this right here, you can clean this up if you want. Just lay your knife down gentle. And you don't want to get into the rib. You just want to take a little bit of that silver skin and sinew off, a little bit of that built up fat pockets, that membrane. Now I'm going to pick this up and see this. And if you turn it and tilt it, it's a lot easier to pull that off of there. Once you do that, Let's get the membrane off the back of these ribs. That looks good to me. I'm gonna come over here on this side and take a little bit of this off. So let me dispose of this trash here. We'll be right back to get it seasoned up. Now that I've washed my hands and disposed of all the trimmings, I wanna go ahead first and take a little bit of binder. You can use water, you can use anything you want, olive oil or anything, nothing at all. I'm gonna use a little bit of mustard here, not a lot, just a little bit. All right, so we're gonna use our hot rub today as our base layer. Now I'm using a, our hot rub as a base layer because it's got salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, a little bit of paprika, a little bit of cumin. It's got all the elements that I'm looking for as a good base layer rub. If you've got another good base layer that you wanna use, by all means use it. But I just wanna get a little bit of a base layer down on that, and then I'm gonna come back on my sweet rub. Now my sweet rub is my original rub that I developed. It's got those same elements in it, but a little bit sweeter. And once I get a base layer in on, I'm just gonna pat it in, flip it over and repeat the process and we'll be ready for the grill. A Little bit of low and slow. Our classic 321 rib is ready to go on, I believe. You can see that even after I patted it in, I didn't use a whole lot of rub because I'm cooking so long that I feel like that you need a lighter coat. And I'm gonna get this rib on now, three hours, not looking at the grill, letting it go. I may spritz it after the first 45 minutes, an hour, I'll look at it and know. I'll come back and show y'all, but let's get it on the grill. All right, now that we've got our slab of spare rib seasoned down, they've sweated in, our grill's running at 225 degrees, let's get it on. All right, I've never waited this long for ribs in my life. It's been three hours and we're still not done yet. But my rub is stuck. I didn't want to spray them or spritz them like a lot of people do because I'm going to use my butter bath. That's the only difference that I'm doing old school versus new school. And I'm going to use my butter bath on them. So let's get them off the grill. They've been three hours. Look at that. The rub is stuck to them good. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that moisture on them Heritage Farm Cheshire ribs. Wanting to come out back of that rib looks good, just like the front. Let's get it over here and wrap it up. All right, we've got our ribs over at our table. The rub is stuck good, like I talked about. I wanna take this slab of ribs and turn it over where it's meat side down. All right, and once we do that, now I've took my butter bath and I've took a quarter cup and I've measured out three quarters of a cup of apple juice in my shaker here. I've got it all mixed around well. And now I just wanna take, and pour some butter bath over that rib. Now, that's all the liquid that rib's gonna need. So let's get this thing wrapped up tight. And you can see I use my pan for kind of a trough to catch the butter bath and hold it in. Now, these have been on three. I'm gonna get them back on two hours. Set a timer, I'm not gonna look at them. We'll pull them off and sauce them. Let's get them back on. All right, our ribs have been on wrap for two hours. So I'm five hours cooked into my ribs and I wanna go ahead and pull them off. 
I'm gonna get them over to my cutting board, get them unwrapped, get them sauced up, and get them back on the pit for an hour, and we'll see how our classic 321 ribs taste. All right, we're over to cutting board. Let's get these ribs unwrapped and see what we've got. Woo! It does look like our bones are starting to pop through on the big end like I like to see on competition ribs. All right, now that my ribs is out of my foil, I'm gonna take a little bit of my sweet sauce and put on the back of this rib. Get it basted in, really light coat. Now we're gonna get this rib turned over and get some more sauce on the front. Oh man, look at that color of that butter bath. Now I didn't pay any attention to that a while ago, but look at that nice looking bark on it, nice looking color, nothing's burnt up. I never spritzed this rib. Now I'm gonna get it sauced up and get it back on the cooker. All right, our rib has been on six hours. It looks good. Three, two, one classic rib. I'm gonna slide this under here and take this rib off. It's wanting to break on me, I see it. All right, I am done with the longest rib cook I've ever cooked in my life. This is classic three, two, one ribs. And what I mean by that is, I cook these ribs three hours, low and slow at 225 degrees. I season them, first rubbing them with a little bit of mustard for a binder. And you can use anything you like, it don't have to be mustard. I use my hot rub and my sweet rub. Again, use anything you like. When it come time to wrap, I didn't spritz or anything like that during the three hours on my Traeger. I just used my butter bath, three quarters of a cup mixed up like the direction says poured it over this spare rib, pulled it out. You've seen the color for yourself, what it did, put my sweet sauce on the end, put it back on for a solid hour. I'm running the Royal Oak charcoal pellets. And this is a solid A1 rib. I don't know how it tastes yet, but I can tell you it looks good. And they say you eat with your eyes first, right? So let's get in here and get a bite. Now, let me also reiterate this for all you viewers out there. I cook a lot of rib recipes. I got some questions last week. Why I moved up to 300 degrees on cooking my ribs instead of 275, what I normally like cooking at. Well, this recipe is a 225. I cook ribs at 250 sometimes. There's all kind of ways to go to the grocery store. It depends on if you want to go a short ride or a long ride, whether you cook low and slow or hot and fast. It just depends on when you want to eat. I've cooked ribs before in two hours. It really don't matter. It's up to you, you make the decision. That right there seems like an awesome rack of ribs. There's not but one thing left to do and I'm ready to get in here and get a bite. So let's get in here and get this middle one out. Still got the tip on it. Whew. This is what you're looking for in the rib. Moisture. Look at that. Oh yeah. Everybody likes their meat moist. Let's see how we done. you like fall off the bone ribs with an excellent flavor and you want low and slow in a classic recipe, then this is definitely for you. I feel like I've got stuff all over me and you know what, it really don't matter. Thank you guys for watching my video. If you like what you've seen, be sure to like and subscribe, share it with your friends. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and now TikTok. And of course, YouTube, we'll see you next week.